Hello, and welcome to the BLM uh, FTEM webinar. My name is Caroline Noble. I'm with the IFTDIS team as a technical lead. Uh, we also have uh, Kim Ernstrom with the IFTDIS team and Bree Schuler with the team to help guide you guys through the newly released FTEM. And joining us as well is your esteemed leader, Dave Mueller, who I will um, turn this over to for him to get started uh, introducing it. Wow, thanks. Thanks, Carolyn. Can you guys hear me? Am I coming through? Hopefully yep. I'm coming through. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for joining us. And uh, Going through the new or uh, the new improved uh, FTEM, um, and it thanks thanks to Carolyn and Bree and Kim and and there's a few other people from the development team that are uh, that will be on as well uh, to help me uh, muddle through this with you all. Um, so I just uh, wanted to kind of go over the. Uh, just go over the agenda. So I'm gonna we're gonna get into uh, account management roles privileges because I think right now that's a little glitchy for people. And Carolyn's gonna provide a good overview of of that. And then we're gonna get right into um, you know into the FTEM monitoring and reporting. Uh, and we'll go through a couple of uh, fire uh, fuels treatment intersection examples, and then we're going to look at a report. Uh, and so then we'll we'll be able to kind of give it a good overview. The whole goal is to provide you all with an overview of the new FTEM and, and how it works. And uh, without any further ado from there, um, unless I miss something, Carolyn can... Uh, jump into the uh, account management roles, privileges, etc., and take yeah. it away. All right, thanks, Dave. Just a couple logistical things. We are recording this session, uh, so if you have coworkers who are unable to attend, or if you choose to refer to it later, you'll be able to. Um, the majority of you are on mute. You can raise your hand and get unmuted, but we request that you type your questions into the chat box um, as we go through this and we will have people monitoring the chat box and if it's a timely question with something we're discussing right now we'll, we'll sort of interject and, and get that question answered um, and we may save some of them till the end um, we'll try and leave a little bit of time at the end for, for question and answer so as, as Dave said the goal of, of the session is to just show you folks um, how to actually use the FTEM application, which is now spatial um, in nature, replacing the, the uh, older system, which was more of an access database. Um, and I just want to give you a little bit of information about account setup um, and roles and privileges. It's it's not kind of a one-time thing with a lot of a lot of this, but it can be confusing at first. So if you're seeing my screen, um, the first thing to know is is that um, FTEM is uh, built within the IFTDIS application. Um, you can see as I'm moving my cursor, there's an FTEM um, icon here on what's called the navigation bar. So in order to create an account for FTEM, you have to have an IFTDIS account. So uh, once you create an IFTDIS account, um, you then have a process for um, requesting an FTEM account. And that should be auto-approved for everyone with a .gov email address as uh, what's called the viewer role. Um, most of you will probably be more in the editor role. Some of you are agency administrators. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to move to FTEM. And we'll talk about this, uh, what's called the landing page and what's on it in a minute. But just to get through access and role, roles and privileges, first of all, you'll get a, uh, a profile. Um, and when you have your profile, you can see a little bit about yourself. And then you'll see roles. And, and my role is, is a higher level role administrator. But um, if you look at the different types of roles, here's where you can come in. Um, for you guys, it would just be BLM. And you, you can request editor access. Um, and editor is people that are actually going to enter data and do the monitoring on FTEM treatments. So most of you will need the editor role. Um, 
there are roles called well, let me just show you this too while we're here is your FTEM preferences. Uh, when you come in here, you can select a map extent that will automatically zoom to your unit. So you can choose your agency, um, and then you can choose these are geographic areas you can choose. That doesn't prevent you from navigating and zooming and panning all over the U.S. It just helps you zoom into a specific area every time um, you log in. So that's more of a user preference thing. But in terms of the, the roles and privileges, um, here I've got a master list of everyone with an FTEM account. And you can see that we have primarily uh, five roles. Um, if I go just to BLM, uh, there's there's the editor, which I talked about, which many of you will fall in. So this is a list of all the BLM editors. And you guys don't need to know this. I'm just sort of showing you um, how this process works. And then there's agency administrators for the BLM, which is a smaller number. I believe it's at the state level. Um, so we've worked with Dave to assign these folks as administrators for their state for BLM account requests. So when a new account request comes in, the user specifies what region they're going to want to do editing in, and those requests will be filtered to these administrators who will then approve the editors for that state. So that's sort of how that works. Um, there's some nuances to it um, that we can sort of answer on a case-by-case -case basis. The agency viewer role, just so you guys know, there's two here now for the BLM that may be pending account requests waiting to come in, or this may be um, certain people that work uh, for the BLM that just want to sort of have an overview of what's going on. Some of your higher level administrators or regional FMOs um, are just going to want to sort of see what's going on, but not necessarily do any editing. So the main point of this is just that most of you will be asking for editor access, enter data, and those of you who are administrators, and you should know who you are at this point, um, will be the ones granting those editor privileges. So. If, for example, there's an agency viewer from the BLM, and I click on this user, the administrators will go to grant agency roles, and they can check editor for you and grant that role. So it's a pretty simple process, and it's one time um, to get these set up. You do have to reset passwords every 60 days. That's a security requirement. Um, but that's how you'll um, go through the process. And once you're in place and set up um, with all these agency administrators set up, it should go pretty smoothly to keep people's accounts up to date. So with that, um, I think I'll turn it back over to you, Dave, and I'll give you the screen to show um, the actual FTM monitoring process, if I can get this Good. right. Give me a second. Yeah, so just, just, the screen. just to reiterate that, you know, all the state fuels leads will be the uh, FTEM agency administrators for your state. And uh, you will be granting those roles and privileges for the people in the state that that you want to uh, give, edit, and develop the uh, monitoring reports. Um, so, hmm, do I have to do this? Show my screen? Yeah. Yes, I think so. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm. Are you seeing my screen here? Oh, okay. So I was just giving a, uh, administrator access to James just before the, and I didn't move over to FTM. So here we are. So yeah, we'll um, the landing page. So here is the here is the landing page or the the home page as I as I call it when you first get in the FTEM, and and this has actually got a lot of good information. Uh, on the on the page, and I'm just going to kind of go quickly over it, and I'm actually going to move uh, from right to left, so we'll do it Arabic style. Uh, so you know you can kind of see that there's some missing data information on the far right, and, and it's kind of to the uh, it, it provides you the fact that you know you may not see a wildfire when you first get into uh, into the FTEM and get into your your view page because uh, you know a wildfire even though FTEM updates the wildfires every day uh, from with me and GeoMac if there's a if there's a polygon with it um, you may not see it because 
uh, it may not have a out control or contain, contain date recorded. So the default is 45 days after the start of the fire, uh, then it, uh, FTEM will recognize the fire if it doesn't have a out control or contain. If it has any one of those three, it'll recognize it. First looks for out, then it looks for control and then contain and then 45 days. So the other one that it says here is that you may not, you may not see uh, the treatments and, it, and you may not see the treatment polygons for sure for BLM. And that's mostly because um, polygons, even though uh, it looks into NIF pores and it, and it looks for the polygons and the data, um, the polygons may not have been loaded in the NIF pores because they're sent, taken from VTRT or VTRT loads uh, data into NIF pores once a month towards the end of the month. And so it might take a while for you to actually see polygons. And I have a kind of a cool example I'll actually show you of that here shortly. Um, there's look, working to the left, you can, there's the agency contacts. Uh, you can read the guidance. So within, uh, within our BLM monitoring guidance, you'll see that I've loaded the uh, 9214 and 9214-1 requirements that require FTEM to be used and uh, treatments that intersect uh, that are intersected by wildfires to be reported on. So just to reiterate that, um, you can also read general guidance and that's just guidance on how to monitor treatments. And so it's a really cool tutorial uh, on just, you know, inter information on maybe providing some decision support on how to answer the, the questions and how to actually monitor a treatment. So that's a really, that's a really good thing. Um, and then the, the big one that I, that I really like to show is this get information because there's just a huge amount of good information on, you know, getting started using permissions, learn how to use F, FTEM. And it's just a real good help step-by-step -step tutorial on uh, using FTEM and you'll be able, you can see that uh, there's a just good visual uh, tutorial. You can you can print it off. You can see up here. There's a way to print it, and, and you can use you know a printed copy if that's what you like. So it, it's uh, it's got a lot of great information. Um, if you really want to get into you know the the work inner workings of of FTEM, you can go into this more. Uh, get more. And, you and look at this technical documentation, and you can you can actually see how it derives the, the fuels and wildfire data, uh, the sources, the, this treatment interactions and buffering, and, and how um, treatments uh, or wildfires, I should say, wildfires are are buffered to uh, reach out and see if uh, if an interaction occurred. So you can see if you have a point uh, and not a polygon, uh, it buffers by a, uh, estimating the, the area based on the reported acreage of the fire. If it's a polygon, it's, it's uh, a one meter buffering in all directions. And you can add, uh, you can actually increase that buffering up to like 1500 meters. And we'll kind of look at that uh, when we get into an example. So a lot of great information. You know, you got for anybody uh, that needs help, first go to this and, and kind of and, and read through it. Or, you know, they got a lot of cool, uh, like little information things too, with like little like tidbits of information that uh, can help you, like take shortcuts and stuff. And I haven't memorized any of them, but uh, there's a there's if you go through there, you'll see a lot of little uh, call out boxes, etc. So. That's um, that's the homepage. Really, again, it's just you know pretty simple, and we'll get into the actual monitoring. So, you know, you when you come here, you see the homepage. You say, I want to start looking at uh, some monitoring. You click on the monitoring, 
and my extent is uh, you know looking at the at the national picture, and so you can see that it's. But, uh, you can see all the fires. I'll move over a little bit here um, because I want to deal with the west, west of the Mississippi. Even though we have a lot of BLM land east of the Mississippi, we rarely have interactions. Uh, but anyway, I, so I can go to the home page. I can go to this map extent. It's a split screen. So you can see on the left, there's a, a, a an area map that shows uh, these little red, these little red uh, kind of points that shows possible wildfire uh, in fuels treatment intersections. You'll see out here. You'll see to the far left the layer list. So all these different colors. So you have first off you have wildfire points, and then you have wildfire polygons. And each one of those may have some different colors. And so if this wildfire point, as you see me circling, if that was green, that would be a completed monitor. So you did this. So somebody went in and monitored that fire and completed a, uh, a monitoring report. If it's orange, it's in progress. And then as you see some of these red ones, there's a uh, you know, need to check because there's some possible intersections there. Same thing with the uh, polygons. And then you scroll down, you can see the treatments. So as you get closer in, you as you zoom closer in, you'll see these treatments and you might see first points uh, because there's no polygon data, um, or you'll see polygons and it's the same color scheme. Uh, there's also a lot of other cool um, you know, data and layers that you can click on and click off. It does include Alaska too. So, it, so there's there's this layer list, and I always hide that then, so I can kind of see across the country where there's some possible intersections. And so, looking to so going down here at the bottom of this left side, you'll see all these different uh, icons. And so there's the layer list. We just saw that. You can add layers. So you can bring in layers, there's a lot of layers. You can upload a shape file. If you have a shape file, you can upload shape files to treatments or other shape files that you might need. You can do the base map, typical base map gallery. So it has all the cool map images, imagery, etc. You can do measurements and you can add um, you know, there's graphics that you can add so you can draw your own polygons, et cetera. But if you draw any of your own stuff, it, it doesn't get saved. Uh, it's just for that time, but it's good reference. You might want to adjust some polygon or something just for your own reference, who knows. So then if you look over to the right, you'll see the, the four tabs. There's really four tabs that you have to deal with when monitoring uh, a treatment wildfire uh, interaction. And uh, this, so there's this wildfire list. And right now I am looking at 2018 wildfires. I could look at 2017 wildfires. So right now we are just saying though that um, you're going to be doing reporting from 2018 out in FTEM now. Uh, the legacy reporting system up through 17 uh, won't. It will only be used for you know data recovery and reporting, etc. Uh, from now on, from this point on, this year we'll be using the 2018 uh, reporting. And you can actually see. So I can see in 2017 there was a there was a green fire right here. Um, so that, that there's a monitor, there's something that a wildfire that got monitored. But I want to go back to 2018. And so I so here it is. And so you'll see on this list, you know, these are all the uh these are all the BLM possible BLM wildfire fuels treatment interactions. So there's 20 on this page. There's like oh look at all these pages of wildfires, but there's there's 40, 
and then there's 40 well there's 46 that's kind of huh it's kind of interesting because yesterday there was only 45 so actually within a day there's been one possible interaction intersection uh, recorded by the system <clears throat> I might go off on that rabbit trail here and I might want to find out which one that is and so I want to look at oh it's the same it's down on the San Pedro and uh, it was 12 acres it was a uh, control date of yesterday and if I want to find more information uh, I can go up to this little left pointing icon and I can get all kinds of information on the San Pedro and so I can see that it was 12 acres that um, started on the 19th and it was out on the 19th didn't have a control date and it doesn't have an out date I'm sorry it has a containment date so it got it got uh, tagged by the system because it has a containment date if it didn't have a containment date We'd be waiting 45 days, probably minimum 45 days. So it's kind of so you can see that here's one way to find uh, information. So I'm going to close that back. Um, if I really wanted to, I could get more information from it by zooming to it. And wow, it's actually, huh? It's kind of neat because that's on the San Pedro and in a few minutes I'm going to actually come to the Hereford uh, fire interaction and I'm going to use that as an example. So there's that actually another fire right nearby that happened um, a few days ago, it happened yesterday. So that's, that's kind of cool, but we're going to come back to all this. So it just shows you this is a good, this was probably a good rabbit trail to show you how you can kind of get all kinds of information. I could also get information just by clicking on that fire and getting that same tabular information that we just saw. I could also do go up here and on identify and go go back and oh wait, I want I want to identify and get all kinds of information. So it's kind of cool. Get all kinds of information in all different ways. So let's get back to, so if now I'm here, how do I want to get back to my extent? So I'm going to go up here and this is going to zoom to my initial extent. So it's there. I still have the San Pedro identified. So I want to click out of that. I don't want to go to the San Pedro right now. I want to show you guys how to work your way across from a wildfire treatments to monitoring to completing. So to do that, I want to go to a fire um, it's called the Muddy Road Fire, and I think Lisa's on here. I think she's on. The, yep, she's on. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to look at that because it's just kind of a real simple, uh, a simple treatment uh, wildfire interaction. And then we'll go to a little bit more complex one. Um, so I can go over there in all different kinds of ways. I can either type it in right here, and it'll get me there. I can uh, page through this list and look for, you know, uh, this this wildfire that I that I hear, Old Muddy Road, or I can just zoom in, zoom into the New Mexico region. So I'm just going to tag right onto the Old Muddy Road, and I'm going to say zoom to. And it gets me right to the Old Muddy Road fire. Now I'm going to zoom out because it's a little bit, a little bit bigger fire, and to give everybody a good context for what's going on, I now zoomed out a little bit, and you can see that there's some that uh, here's the old muddy road fire. It's got the polygon showing up. It obviously bumped into a treatment. I don't know which treatment yet. I could find that out by clicking on the treatment and getting information from it. But um, so it's on BLM land. It's uh, actually north of Amarillo, Texas. Kind of cool. So I'm going to say, you know what? I want to I want to check out. I want to 
and look at the treatments associated with this fire. And so again, it zoomed me in. So I'm going to zoom out so I get the whole context. And I see, wow, okay, there's actually, you know, a couple, three, four fires that pot or treatments that possibly interacted. But I know for sure, just by the visual part of all this, that it was one of these two treatments here. So what was it? Was it the 2015 treatment? And that shows up. Or was it the 2018 broadcast burn? And that shows up as an X. So that tells me that there's that the polygon hasn't been uh, loaded into NIF cores yet. If there is a polygon, they may not have had a polygon, or the polygon just has not been loaded from VTRT into NIF cores. But uh, so so our our policy says that uh, in in an IB is coming out, it's making its way through the system, which means you and I both know how long it takes for IMIBs to get through the system. So you'll see it at some point, but we have an IB coming out that shows update that discusses the updates to the system, the use of the system, some of the nuances for BLM, and one of the things is um, you choose the treatment that contributed most to modifying your wildfire behavior or aided in the fire management actions. Right? You can, if it helped in fire management like access, etc., you can you can cho choose it. And, and frequently, this will be your most recent treatment. So you either have the ability to identify for for BLM, you have the ability to identify the treatment that made the most uh, uh, difference, in it, or the latest treatment. You don't choose both, but you one or the other, whichever one made the most difference or is the latest treatment. And, and in this case. You know, these are both broadcast burns. If this was a mastication, if this was a mastication, perhaps like the 2015 treatment was mas was a mastication. Was it? Uh, did it take the fire out of the crowns? It was uh, all phase three juniper or phase two juniper. You masticated it over the 4,300 acres. Was that what was that the treatment that took it out of the crowns and back onto the ground and helped aided the fire suppression, or was it the broadcast burn? And so these, so those are the things you kind of have to, you know, you guys out in the field know your treatments, you know, the intersection, you should know what happened at, at some point anyway. And so you know, it, it, we're we're really leaving it up to. Um, to you all to make a you know a good informed decision to make the right decision on really the the the, the treatment that made the most difference or the treatment you know the latest treatment so you have those two options so in this case uh, they're both broadcast burns and I'm going to choose this broadcast burn and so okay I have this um, and I'm going to I'm going to do a I'm going to modif monitor monitor this treatment. So I click on the monitor tab. You see that the treatment is showing up. I click on it. I'm going to enter data. And so you're asked the same, all of the data that you enter is the same data that was entered into the legacy system that in our six portal. So the, none of the none of the data questions have have changed and so but there are really only five required uh, fields to be filled out and those that have these little or six I think there's there, I'm sorry there's six and you'll see those in the uh, the, the asterisk so you know you, you have the the uh, details wildfire start in the treatment spotted burned through was primary used for suppression actions. You know, we can we can identify that treatment acres burned by the wildfire. Um, you know, you can identify the amount of acres burned by the wildfire. You know, in this case, maybe it was. You know, it, it probably it would have been zero maybe because you used it to burn out, right? Or just bumped into it and that was it. Went out. Um, the date. And if you 
and, and if you uh, put in a date that's, um, you know, let's say 14th, it says, see, it, it, it's prior to the fire start date of March 19th. So you, so you have to correct that. And it was like, what, the 22nd or so, you know. And then the military time, and that did the fire behavior change as a result of the treatment? Well, I would say yes, because you used it. Did the treatment contribute? Yes. Was the treatment strategically located? Yes. And 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 I'm just hypothetically again, you guys know the interactions or and, and your treatments and what happened. And so I'm just going through this. Uh, you can write the comments down and then you can continue on with how did the treatment contribute to the control of the fire, dominated type of fire spread. Again, it's all of the same questions and we don't have to go through every single one of these, but um, you know, you go through and answer these questions. And then the key is you want to, in order to save these and complete these, you need to save and, and you can either save or you can save and close. You can also add attachments. You can add things like you can go in and you can browse your files to attach pictures, attach maybe some other narrative. And I'm thinking of maybe like the one page or the, the one pager that we asked for last year or the multiple pager that we asked for last year. Uh, so that, you know, I can go in and, and, and get a, oh, there's an attachment. Maybe there's a one pager or a multiple pager uh, that I can provide to, you know, their directorate here or who will then provide it to the directorate and BLM who then might move it on. Uh, we've also sent it on to the Office of Wildland Fire. Uh, so those those one pagers, those multiple pagers are really a, are kind of a, a real important addition to, to FTEM here. So I can get out. So I want to just save and I want to save and close. And it says monitoring responses were successfully updated. You can see that, oh, look at this little green dot here. That shows that that treatment was monitored. So that's, and so then you can go over here to the complete and you can see, wow, all right, there was one completed. And you can see the attachments or again, add attachments, etc. So don't worry. Um, Lisa, uh, you'll be able to uh, amend this, and and uh, you won't have to take keep this report, so this can be amended real easy. Just go in and change the stuff, everything that I just did. So really, that's a pretty simple one. Did I miss anything, Carolyn or Bree? I don't think so. Um, I don't know if you want to. Yeah. yeah, he showed attachments. Did you want to show the table summary? Um, and oh, then I don't know if yeah. you were going to cover, you know, completing the fire, the importance of actually finishing that last step, but maybe you were going to do another. Uh, yeah, so here's the table summary. Yeah, you're right. I should. And so you can kind of see a table. It gives you a table that you can you can download into, you know, the with the different attributes and the questions being answered. And this will eventually get moved into the reporting. Uh, so you can, you'll can you see a summary report, which we'll go through. Um, but yeah, you have I to think, complete. Um, oh, go, go ahead, ahead. sorry. No, nope, you go. <laughs> uh, okay, so completing the, the report, I need to see. Remind me how to complete a report. Since so I haven't you, um, so you, like Dave was saying, you work through these tabs, you know, from left to right, and and so it's important that when you're looking and refining your treatment list and that treatment tab, um, that you've got to get all of those treatments monitored and into a complete status before uh, that complete wildfire for BLM button becomes available. So that's a very important step. So you can see that his old muddy fire is still in progress, it's yellow. Um, if he goes through his treatment tab, you're gonna see that he's got one complete, one is green and one is pink, meaning that it's, it hasn't been started. 
So he can remove that treatment if he's not going to monitor it, at which time right. he would be able to yep. complete that fire. Oh, wait, I want to I want to keep this one, but I want to remove this one. And I was going to go through this. I totally forgot. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. Nope, so there's, it. go. I'm going to remove this interaction and you can remove interactions. So I identified that that is not the one that we are going to report on. We don't want to report on one. So I, I want to remove this interaction. And so that's exactly what it'll do. And so now I've removed that interaction. There's just this one interaction. And then I can move to complete that. And before I couldn't click on it, it wouldn't let me click on this complete wildfire monitoring, but it does now because there's no other interactions for me. So yeah, I, it, that one totally. So see, that's, that's why, um, that's why I was wanting to do this was one, because, um, you know, you, you learn the most when you teach something, but also I needed to let you guys know, you, you know, me, uh, you know, I've been doing this stuff for 40 years and it's all been operational. I'm technically challenged. And if I can do this stuff, you guys can do this stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's a good demonstration though, of how, you know, you do, how important it is to work left to right and to um, just ensure that once you get that, that treatment list refined um, to the point where these are the treatments that I've determined the system's going to auto detect and bring some of those in like they've showed, but it's really up to you to have the final determination on which one truly did interact from what you've seen on the ground or what you've gathered from field um, folks, or if you are the field folks doing this. So once you do that, you, you move them to the monitor tab and start monitoring. And so one, one other thing I do wanna to touch on with the monitoring tab is um, part of the reason why you can bring all of them over if you want, or one at a time, is that we do allow for batch monitoring. So if you get into a situation where you've got um, we, this is specific to um, large fires where you might have a ton of interactions, but you know that you um, can answer some of the questions or fill in some of the fields similarly for multiple treatments. All you have to do is move all those into the monitor tab and select them all, and then you can do some batch monitoring to speed up the process. So um, that was just one other thing that I wanted to touch on. Good. And I was actually going to show that in the next example. Oh, sorry, Dave. Oh, we, yeah, see, <laughs> got ahead of me. That's all right. And so, so as I said, you know, it's completed right now. There is one completed, but you can't amend these. And so, you know, in order to amend it, you're going to provide a justification. You'll push, you know, okay, and then you'll be able to amend it. And you'll be able to go in and back in and make uh, changes. But so in order, I, I do want to just get back out and I want to go to one little bit more complex one that has a lot of interact, a lot of treatments surrounding it. So you can see when I zoomed out that there's, you know, we're on the, the, the old muddy road fire and it shows up that way. So I'm going to get out of it though. And I am going to now, instead of instead of looking for a fire or X or I'm, I know I know where it is. I know where the fire is that I want to show you. So I'm going to show you this part of it, being able to just zoom in. And it's near that San San Pedro. The San Pedro is a cool place. If you ever get to Arizona, go to go to the San Pedro, man. It's, it's an awesome. Beautiful, beautiful area. Um, anyway, here's the Hereford fire. And as I zoom in, you know, you can see the, the fires are zooming in as well. There's only two in the extent now. And so here is like becoming some of the things for BLM that we're beginning to see. We have a lot of these linear field breaks, you know, well, this one's you know pretty snake-like. But there's a lot of these types of field breaks, and they can be quite long. They can be quite, you know, quite large. They're, they get intersected in multiple places. But I wanted to kind of zoom in on this Hereford and kind of give you that that you know you can both batch mix as well as add intersections. So you know, I I got okay. I'm on the Hereford fire, right? I click on it, it shows, you know, some possible intersections. 
And, uh, you know, there's a couple here like the bridge seed that um, might have intersected with it. Uh, there's, you know, some other treatments that may have. And so I'm going to, you know, click on treatments. And I'm beginning to see that there's a lot of, you know, treatments in all different directions, you know, at least identified. And I'm going to need to kind of get an idea of which one that, which one is the one that really, um, you know, it, it intersected. And so, you know, I'm going to, I can look and see, well, you know, I, you know, the latest one is this 2015 uh, Gila District, and that was a mowing, and I'm sure it was a maintenance. And so, you know, was it, is it the maintenance, the mowing that um, made the difference, or was it, you know, the thinning? And that shows up. So the thinning, but for the purposes of this, you know, it was the mowing, uh, and so it was the latest. But you'll see that. Um, you know, it possibly intersected because it's, you know, it was, uh, you know, how many, how many acres? Um, you know, okay, seven, almost seven tenths of an acre. But if it was a bigger one uh, and it, and it touched, actually touched this salt cedar control, you would want to add, you would also want to do that one as well. And so you would actually, um, you would actually now want to do at least those two. You would want to want to provide a report for at least those two, and perhaps it even touched this bridge seating. Um, and so, yeah, okay, I, maybe it, this bridge seating is the one that I really want because, but there's no polygon, and it's you know, it was over the whole area. Um, maybe it was only in this sprinkle mowing area, but it's kind of you know that lat long is a little off. Um, and so I want to add that interaction, and I say add, add the treatment, and that interaction has been added to the list. And so now I can now I can choose that. I can choose again this. Uh, I got to choose the 2015, the bridge seed, and the salt cedar control. And so now I can. And so now I can can uh, monitor those treatments. I can take the three; they're all it's all the same outcome. I can enter the data. The only problem, and so it, you go through and you answer these questions, uh, and it'll answer the questions for all three. The only thing it won't do is it won't batch add the amount of acres burned by the wildfire or the military time. So you'll have to go in individually and answer those questions. So that's just a good. Um, example of being able to being able to uh, do multiple. So you can kind of see there's just a lot of, you know, with our linear fuel breaks. And if I got into think places like Oregon and Idaho, where there's hundreds and hundreds of miles of of our fuel breaks, um, it looks uh, looks pretty interesting. Um, okay, so from there. I just wanted to show you a completed, uh, a good, you know, completed um, report, and then you can actually see the the report that we can that can be generated. So I need to get out of the Hereford fire, and then I need to go to 2017 because that's where I want to get into the completed report. And I can see there it is right here, and it's the bridge fire. It was back in 2017, and I'm going to zoom to it. And so I can see that there were a lot of, of uh, you know, different fires that were associated in that area. That place burned like crazy. Uh, there were a lot of fires in that area. This was my old stomping ground. This is where I started the fuels program for BLM right here in my career. I won't tell you when, but um, anyway, I actually did these for some of these prescribed fires. I sometimes wish for those old days, but we won't get into that. Anyway, um, so here's the bridge coulee, and uh, you can see it, it's it's a totally completed um, interaction. 
all of them have been they're all there's there's just different um there's a lot of different different reports you can light them all up so i can select them all light them all up and you can see where all those reports took place on that wildfire so i just wanted to show you you know what what you know how really visual this this uh, system is it's good for me because i can come in and, and look at a completed report and say wow okay i want some further information and and uh, you know i can call up uh you know, Pat, and say, hey, Pat, give me some more information on this. Or I can look through the course of the year and go, wow, there are a lot of like Idaho or Nevada's lighting up with all these red, uh, you know, these red points and the polygons. And it's, I can say, hey, uh, can you guys, you know, maybe give me some some information on some of these? Washington is asking if we've had any success with our fuels treatments or what are we learning from our fuels treatments, uh, you know, reporting on a failure is is okay as long as we learn from it and you know identify what we've learned so uh just to have to keep that in mind uh so anyway i think with a little bit of time remaining we can just look at the reports and so the reports for this fire i can go and get a report and i did that yesterday so i'm hoping it'll come through So I just went into the AFTM report. I, I selected, there's like five different kinds of reports and data download that you can do to this. Uh, I selected the FTM wildfire report and it's just, just a, 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 a summary of the wildfires that have interactions for BLM in 2017. And I can now select those fires that have completed reports. And I'll look at the bridge Cooley. I'll generate the report. And so here it is. And so I know James, you had sent an email out asking about the reports and and, and what they look like. Here here they are. Um, you know, it has a map and it has a lot of good information about uh, you know about the intersections and all of the questions that were that were asked. And had you you know did all did, answered all the questions across. Uh, you'd see all this data filled in, and so you'd be able to generate spreadsheets of, you know, these for these reports. At least I can. You can if you want to. But so it's really, um, so it, it's got a lot of good utility, a lot of good information. I can get all kinds of information now, all of the different treatments and um, the conditions, etc. So you got a good overview of the reports and I don't know if I'm missing anything any anything Bree or Carolyn that you might want to yeah I'll just throw in with the oh go ahead Carolyn um okay well one thing is on that that first report type that they've selected uh that's for an individual wildfire um if you open that up again Dave just to point out that there's a uh, uh yeah, yeah. A little icon in the upper right hand corner where you can download that report as a PDF. Um if that's something that you want to do, if you want to uh you know, email the report to someone or something like that, or just keep keep your copy in the files, whatever you want to do, you can generate a PDF from that. So um you wanna open that up again, Dave, just open up the Bridge Cooley report one more time. Um where it says download in the upper right download. Um yeah, you can download, if you click on that, it'll say PDF or Excel data sheet. So the Excel data sheet won't have the map image. Um, you can download just the map image individually, or you can download the entire report as a PDF. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention, I can't recall if you mentioned it, Dave, but with regard to reports, um, there's those five types of reports, the wildfire specific report that they have demonstrated will be the most relevant initially because the other reports are more of data summaries. Um, they're reports for regional um, state and agency levels and they'll be of use as time passes but the, the caveat with those is that they're only going to contain the data entered into this FTEM system 
uh, for now moving forward. So the, the legacy data that you guys have entered in the past up through 2017 will not be summarized currently uh, within this system. Mm -hmm. So if you pick the, you know, a, a state summary and, and wanted to see 2015 through 2018, you won't be able to do that yet. Um, that data may get integrated at some point, but it's not in this system now. So those reports are there, uh, but just remember if you generate any of them, they're going to be very low numbers initially until folks start um, entering data for 2018. Um, and the same is true for the data download. That will be a download of all the data that's been entered um, as you go through the pick list by BLM by 2018, but it won't be a copy of the, the historic data entry. So I wanted to point those two things out with, re with regard to the, the reporting. Bree, did you have something to add? Nope, I was going to mention the download. So we're good. Okay. Yep. Cool. Um, so really, I think, I mean, there were a couple other things that I, I would have, like places I would have liked to have, you know, gone to and, and shown you all, but I, I think that that's it. I think we can open up. Have there been any questions? I could, st I, I do want to say before we continue on then is that, again, the IB is, is coming out. Um, there is a couple of other BLM specific things. Um, so the issue of those long linear field breaks and when they're intersected by one fire in multiple places along that field break. Um, you know, currently you can only do the one report, uh, but I, the way I think we can handle it, multiple intersections from the same fire on the same field break is, you know, with different outcomes is through that, you know, through a one, that one pager. And, and if that does happen, you know, along these field breaks for now until we, you know, get the capacity of FTM a little bit more down, uh, we are going to be doing at some point, there will be some more modifications to, to bring it up that capability. But, um, you know, use the one pager to, or even the multiple pager, a more in-depth report to kind of highlight that that there's, you know, that it had multiple intersections with multiple outcomes on the same, you know, field break by the same wildfire. And so, you know, that's how we'd like to see that done right now. And there is a, a comments box for each treatment that you monitor. So you can use that. I think mm -hmm. when you brought that up when we were developing it, Dave, we said, you know, that that would be a good place to... Yeah. To mention that if it had the fire had multiple entries and you needed to, you know, it, it impacted things differently um, in different places to put that there. So at least it's documented in this system too, um, alongside the data. Yeah. And, and are there any questions? Are there any right we now? We had we had one that came up when you were early on when you were showing um how that you to, that you could remove um treatments from the list so question was what about treatments you did not use um do you have to tell the system that this was not used to get rid of the red or that status and and the answer was yes that you can yeah. manually remove the ones that you don't need to monitor right and then um, if you if, if you do need to monitor them later you can add them too you can just go back to the map and, and click on them and add them right um we just have another question from lisa does this only pull treatments from nif pores what about rips nis and s and forest street etc it is only coming from nif pores and fax for forest service users currently uh, right so the, the fuels treatment data comes only from NIF pores, the poly and the polygons as well, and the wildfire data comes from with me and Geomac. And that's updated nightly. So like I said, I already saw that that one um, San Pedro was added like overnight. So I can it's a good again, I can see almost daily if there's you know interactions occurring. And, and then, you know, call people up and say, hey, you know, there's a, these interactions. You guys can go and look as well as state fuels leads and, and editors 
you know, hey, did, you know, did we really have some uh, interactions last night? You know, everybody was busy, and uh, yeah, there they are. So you know, you can make, you're going to need to make reports. Um, so anyway, I, I, it's uh, you know, it's a good, it, it's a, a really good, really good start to a, a good uh, system. I think that's going to help. Uh, it's in really important. It's gaining even more importance for for all of our bureaus to identify, uh, you know, while you know if our fuels treatments are are effective and why they aren't as well, uh, you know, and, and reporting on that and lessons learned at adaptive management purposes. So I think. You know, the, again, wait for the IB. It'll be coming out with a lot of this information, and um, and have 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 at it this year. And if you have any trouble, um, put in a help desk ticket, or you can give me a call. I might be able to help, and I'll probably I'll probably end up saying, "Hmm, well, let me talk to Bree or Carolyn or Kim." <laughs> anyway, so I. I if there's no other questions, any other comments from, from the development team that's on? I don't think so. So um, yeah, thanks everybody. I'm glad this was uh, we limited it to an hour and um, Oh, it looks like good... Brenda might it looks like Brenda might have a question. I just saw ah. her hand raised. Can oh. we unmute people? Unmute her. Yeah, you can Brenda, unmute it. Right? There we go. Just, uh, on her name and yep, there you go. For service first organizations, um, is there going to be some kind of cheat sheet that comes out showing the differences in reporting requirements between the Forest Service and the BLM, or or are there differences? So, so there are some differences, and you look at again. Um, you know, I would suspect that all of our bureaus, and I know that all of the bureaus and the and the Forest Service are developing their, you know, some specific bureau specific guidance, and I'm hoping that they will all eventually be loaded into that um, the ho the homepage for bureau guidance, and so you'll be able to see it there. Okay, but there's not there's not like a comparison that you know of being worked on that would show for this, the BLM requires this, the Forest Service requires that, like all on one page. It would just be different that's guidance. What, that's a good idea. And I think we I, might I need to so. uh, talk about that. <laughs> yeah, no, that'd be a good idea. For, you're right, for service first. Um, it, 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 yeah, that's a good suggestion. Okay. Appreciate it. Anything else? Anything else coming through? Any hands? Do you have another question, Brenda? Nope, I'm I'm good. I'm just not sure how to handle the little buttons to turn off my hand. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Pretty busy on that right screen, man. <laughs> no, it looks pretty clear to me otherwise. So okay. okay. All right. Well, thanks again, everybody. We can shut down and, uh, you know, get your, I, I would think we should continue to push this out to the field for the state leads that are on the call so that um, you guys don't, you know, at the end of the season, start getting all kinds of people needing to, to get roles and, and privileges okayed and we can get questions ironed out, et cetera. So, um, Anyway, hey, thank Dave, you. This, this, Dave, this is Kim. Just really quick, we've, we're going to have this recorded. It'll be posted on the IFTDIS um, webinars page, and I'll send a link to you, Dave, and then you can um, send out to everybody, and we'll send it out to the folks that attended the webinar today as well. So, um, and everybody feel free to share that far and wide, the link for the recording if folks are looking for that. Yeah, very good. Thank you. All right. Thanks everyone. Thanks uh, Carolyn and Bree and and Kim and others. And we'll we'll go forward. All right. Thank All you. Right. Bye.